Hi, I'm Dr. Kobrasi and welcome to my lesson about naming spirocyclic alkanes according to UPAC rules. Now, spirocyclic alkanes are just a subcategory of bicyclic alkanes. Um, the difference between them and uh, the, the bicyclic compounds in my other video is the fact that spirocyclic, they actually share an atom, not a bond. So, uh, um, anytime you have two rings that share a carbon atom, they are called spirocyclic alkanes. For naming purposes, spirocyclic alkanes can be thought of as having two bridges joining one connection point. The two bridges in this uh, slide are the yellow and the green, and the connecting point is the blue dot in the middle. To name spirocyclic alkanes, follow all the rules for naming alkanes with the following modifications. Rule number one, locate the connecting C atom and the two bridges. As you can see here, there is the connecting point, the connecting carbon atom. It's a quaternary carbon that is connected to four carbons. Find the two bridges, bridge one, bridge two. Now determine how many carbon atoms in each bridge, excluding the connecting point. We can see that bridge one has two carbon atoms, whereas bridge two has four carbon atoms. Assemble the name following the, this template. Spiro, open square bracket, bridge one dot bridge two, close square bracket, alkane. The values between the square brackets refer to the number of carbon atoms in each bridge in ascending order, from smallest to biggest. If you remember correctly, for bicyclic compounds, there were three numbers within the square brackets and they were in descending order from biggest to smallest. For spirocyclic it is the other way around it's from smallest to largest so it's ascending order and it's only two numbers. The number of C atoms in the bridge does not include the connecting point and therefore the name becomes spiro open square bracket 2.4 closed square bracket alkane. And what is the alkane part? That's the total number of carbon atoms in this spirocyclic compound. Well, it's equal to the two uh, bridges, four plus two, that's six, plus one atom for the connection point, that's seven, therefore it's a heptane. The uh, final name becomes spiro two, four, heptane. Rule two. If the spirocyclic alkane contains substituents, it must first be numbered. To number the spirocyclic alkane, we always start at one of the two carbon atoms on the small bridge that are directly attached to the connecting point. These two carbon atoms are the ones shown in, inside the yellow circles in my diagram. Okay, so one of these two carbon atoms is going to be my starting point. However, like I said earlier, all the rules of naming alkanes apply. And one of those rules is you always number in the direction that gives the smallest number to the first substituent. We can already see that the bottom circle would give the first substituent the smallest number. And therefore, we would start numbering from the bottom carbon atom. Okay, so let's number it around the small bridge. One, two, three, four. And now we go to the connection, to the connecting point. Five. From the connecting point, we go on the bigger bridge. And now again, we have to give the substituents the smallest number. So we start from the top and we go around. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And therefore, this molecule will be called. 1,6-dimethyl-spiro, open square bracket, 4.5-decane. 